In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the second part, of the four-part series, about the Coptic saint and wonder worker Pope Kyrillos VI. On the Orthodox Library YouTube channel. This part will be a more in-depth introduction, and will be comprised of shorter videos. The link to the first part of the series, being a quick summary of our blessed saint, can be found in the description box below. Please comment, like, click on the bell for updates, subscribe, and first and foremost enjoy. His Life Pope Kyrillos VI was born in Damanhur, Egypt, on August 8, 1902, into a Christian family, with loving parents who named him Azar. It was prophesied during his early childhood by a saintly monk, that Azar would be of the portion of monks. He was known for his asceticism from a young age, years during which he memorized the Gospel of St. John. His father of confession, called him, Blessed Azar, due to the fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit. After graduation from high school, he worked at an international shipping company. Then he quit to join the Monastery of St. Moses the Black, also known as El Baramos Monastery, in Wadi El Nutrun Valley, in northern Egypt. After his tonsure in July 1927, year 1643 according to the Coptic calendar, the new monk Mina, chose the most difficult of tasks, and served the elderly monks with all humility and obedience. He was ordained a priest, and he had the desire to become a hermit. He would feel great terror for this thought, which made him celebrate daily liturgies, much to the anger of fellow monks, who destroyed the prospera, holy bread, making machine. Despite the initial objection of the monks, he was granted the permission to live as a hermit in a cave, an hour away from the monastery. During this time, demons used to appear to him in frightful apparitions, in the form of beasts trying to attack him, and caused earthquakes, to shake his desire to be united to Christ as a recluse. After three years of such demonic torture, Father Mina reported to his brother, that he has seen, the, light. One day, Father Mina heard a knock on his door, only to find the dean of a New York seminary, and the director of Arab monuments in Cairo, asking to have the experience in the path of monasticism explained to them. After the impressive visit, the director didn't know how to thank Father Mina, and expressed his gratitude. A short while after being a recluse, Father Mina returned to the monastery, to find seven elderly monks, harshly, and forcefully kicked out of the monastery. When his intercessions for clemency fell off the deaf ears of the abbot, he vowed to go with them to meet the Pope, while serving them. He went with them to a monastery in Old Cairo, and the reconciliation took place. In Old Cairo, Father Mina was fascinated with an old windmill, a place in which Father Mina knew he would feel God's consolations. He was told, he would have to take the permission of the director of Arab monuments. With gratitude, the old and thankful acquaintance, wrote a long-term lease, and paid for the rent himself. Indeed, God's decisive victory over demons, and God's grace was granted to Father Mina, in that old windmill. He was granted the gifts of healing the sick, exorcising demons, seeing and praying with angels daily, being visited by ancient desert fathers, like 3rd century Abba Paul I Anchorite, clairvoyance, and clairaudience, which means hearing people's thoughts, befriending wild beasts, like lions, a species unheard of in modern-day Egyptian desert, illumination, which means emitting light, levitation, which means floating in the air, while praying, and finally, agility. Being able to physically travel slash teleport instantaneously to far places. Many people ask God to help them. And all of a sudden, they would see Father Mina appear in the flesh in front of them, out of nowhere. His spiritual gifts started being known to all people, 
and visitors started being at his doorsteps. Due to the Second World War, he was asked to leave the Mountain of the Windmill. So he built the St. Mina Church in Old Cairo, together with the adjoining student housing. A couple of people prophetically started addressing him as, Your Holiness. A title reserved for patriarchs. One night, Father Mina, dreamed that he was visited by the newly departed patriarch, who told him that he wanted to have him keep his shepherding staff. His name was enlisted, without his knowledge, in the list of priests nominated to the patriarchy. When the lots were cast out, his name was chosen to be the 116th Pope of Alexandria, and Patriarch of the See of St. Mark, on May 10, 1959, the second day of the month of Bashans, in 1675, according to the Coptic calendar. The new Patriarch was a man of the people, opening his doors to anyone and everyone who want to be blessed, young or old, rich or poor, man or woman, Christian or infidel, at almost any time of the day, and sometimes night, they wished. Everyone that had issues, sicknesses, financial troubles, students asking for a blessing before exams, family members having worries about prisoners of wars missing in action, or people seeking repentance for their kin or sin, and countless various types of visitors, came to him. They were at first weary, but then left refreshed and assured, especially when the Pope revealed to them their names, and the reason of their visits. Their happiness was made perfect after the visit, where their issues were completely resolved. He never cared how long the line of visitors was, but always had his doors open for them. Brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoyed this first video, in the second part about this channel's second patron saint. Please support me, by being my patron on Patreon, and help me with my GoFundMe campaign. The link of the second video will be provided below.